Using GIFs can blow up your next video. These 3 second videos without sound has more potential than what first meets the eye and it all comes down to psychology. For example, this guy is using GIFs for his own advantage and gaining a ton of subscribers and views. So why are GIFs so effective then? You may have seen videos popping off about how YouTube editing style is changing and people are now wanting more authentic content. And that right there is our opportunity. The imperfect and somewhat crappy look of GIFs can actually give more authentic vibe than the perfect look fast-paced animation. And that's pure reverse psychology. And because GIFs demonstrates what you are saying extremely well, are easily accessible and there is unlimited amount of them, it might be that these video clips that has been here for decades has no more to offer than you realize. And I'm gonna show you everything you need for exploiting them in your videos. The first step is finding your GIF. I get my GIFs from Tenor and Giphy, but there are many sites to choose from. To find a perfect GIF for your video, you can search with the word you used in the script. Another effective method is to search emotions and adjectives like anger or scared. Remember, the perfect GIF isn't the one with the best quality or which is the most realistic, but the one which shows the vibe of the video. After finding the right GIF, download it to accessible location and let's move to Resolve. Alright, here we are in the Resolve and now I'm gonna show you my gif editing process so i'm just gonna get the gif and here comes the first catch we're gonna use a fusion composition if you haven't used fusion don't worry i'm gonna explain everything needed so nothing to worry about then just hop on to fusion the first thing we're gonna do is to set up our canvas. Start by dragging a background node from the node bar and connect it to the media out. And from the background node, decrease the alpha to zero. So this is our canvas. Then you can get your GIF. So the first thing we're gonna do, take the output of your GIF and drag it to the output of your background. From the media in, you wanna tick the loop box. So now the GIF doesn't end. Now let's do the adjustments. You want to get a transform node from this node bar and just connect it here. And now from the transform node, using the size parameter, increase the size so the left and the right side covers the canvas, like this. And now using the aspect parameter, decrease the aspect ratio until the green lines meets the canvas. Then I'm gonna take another transform node, plug it in here. And now I'm gonna make it smaller, because I don't want it to cover the whole screen. And now we're gonna do a cool animation for it. So go to frame 0 and keyframe the center. Now start dragging the eye value so the GIF goes down. Then go somewhere around frame 70 and pull it back up. And now there is the animation, but it's very linear and ugly. Select that second transform node and open the spline tab. What you need to do is tick uh, this box and then click zoom to fit right here. It doesn't matter if this doesn't say anything to you. Just highlight the two points and hit F from your keyboard. Then press T from your keyboard and drag the E's into 100. And let's check it out. Whoa, it's cool. And if this is too slow to your liking, you can highlight the points, click this icon from the bottom, and then strike the right line more to left, so the animation becomes shorter. And now if we take a look, you know, this is pretty ideal. Okay, then I want the eyes to move a little faster. What we're gonna do, press shift and space, and type time speed and get this time speed note. And just plug it in here. So the transform goes to the yellow arrow and the time speed goes to the green arrow of the merge node. And now using the speed parameter you can speed it up and now the eyes are moving faster. Then we're gonna take a color corrector from here. Let's make some room and plug it in. In some occasions I want the, I want the GIF to be grayscale. So then I just take the saturation parameter and pull it down. And maybe we're gonna increase the contrast a little bit. And then we spice it up by going to the second transform node settings and ticking the motion blur and now bump up the quality and maybe the shutter angle if you want to. You need to remember that this can be pretty intense for your computer so do this when you're starting to render the video. 